Hi everyone, this is Dave and today I will spend a few minutes showing you how to update the BIOS on your MSI 990FXA-GD80 motherboard to version 13.2. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is grab your flash drive and we're going to format it next. But the first thing you want to do is plug it into directly into one of the uh, dedicated USB ports on the rear of your motherboard where the I.O. panel is. This is so that it gets best communication directly with the motherboard when you flash the BIOS. And don't plug it into one of the eSATA combo ports either. Plug it directly into one of the dedicated only USB ports. So next thing, after you plug in your drive, you're going to want to format the drive. And it's going to be an empty plain old flash drive with an empty root folder on it. Not like the one in my other video where I showed you how to make a bootable USB drive. This is just going to be a plain ordinary formatted uh, flash drive. So you want to check and make sure that the defaults are set. You can click restore default, uh, restore device defaults on the drive when you go to format it under my computer. And that's going to be FAT32 and the default allocation size. Then click quick format and click start. You format it like this because you may have had other settings uh, allocated to the drive, so you want to click the defaults before you format. Now you can see that there's an empty root folder. Next thing you're going to do is go to your the MSI website and download the 990FXA-GD80's uh, latest BIOS, which is uh, the 13.2 I'm covering today. Now 13.2 BIOS is uh, downloaded as just a single executable file that cannot be run from within Windows directly. It's going to be run from uh, the flash drive after it's copied to it. So now that you've downloaded your BIOS file from MSI, which is actually in a zip folder, you're going to have to extract the files. Be sure you do this part using your favorite extract utility or use the one that's built into Windows but extract uh, the zip file that you downloaded now inside the folder that you've extracted you can see the BIOS executable file there Now if you run it from within Windows, you get this message, the file could only be executed in USB pen drive. Please copy the file to your USB pen drive, then run the file again. So it's not meant to be run in Windows, it's meant to be copied to the root folder of your uh, ordinary uh, blank flash drive. So I'm going ahead and copying it over here, just directly to the formatted flash drive, with nothing else on it. see you've got your file there. It's called e7640vd2.exe. Now here I'm about to run the, the BIOS file. And your flash drive should already be plugged into the back of the computer. And I highly recommend that you disable your antivirus or any other background programs or anything else that might be running uh, that might interfere with your, your BIOS update. So that's the important step and then just double click the BIOS file and then you're ready to launch the BIOS update. So just read the warning and then click OK and then it gives you a nice little BIOS update screen saying the current version and the new version that's going to update to which is version D.20 or in other words 13.2. Click OK in the BIOS update window to actually start programming your BIOS. This may take a while, so in the meantime, while you wait, you might want to go get your favorite beverage. In my case, I like coffee, so I'm going to go get a cup.
Now the BIOS is nearing its, uh, its completion point, so just please leave your flash drive plugged in the whole time until you're sure that it's, it's done. It says it's going to uh, successfully done and it's going to auto reboot in five seconds. So it restarts and as you leave the computer powered on and the flash drive plugged in, it's going to restart a couple times. So when it's done completely updating, you'll see a message saying that an operating system cannot be found. Please try disconnecting any drives that don't contain an operating system and press any key to restart. So then you want to disconnect your USB drive. Uh, that's only when you're sure that it's completed updating. And then go ahead and re, uh, restart by pressing the key. So uh, I unplug the flash drive and press the key. And then it starts, it doesn't give you a chance to go into BIOS, it just starts Windows. In which case you might get a blue screen. Uh, because the, the AHCI mode for your SSD or hard drive isn't set and it's looking for it on IDE so you get something like this so at that point uh, your computer will reboot and then you get a chance to go into your BIOS so the computer just restarted and I got into the BIOS and I can see that I've got version 13.2 finally And then you can set all your settings as you like. One of the first things that you should do is uh, save your settings to a flash drive uh, so that you can reload them into the BIOS later when you're finished flashing. this new Windows 8 feature has uh, several options that you probably want to leave disabled but I'm showing you for reference in case you're wondering what it does and so that uh, maybe I can save you some time when I went to enable it uh, I got a couple different messages which I'll show you in a, in a minute but the, the, the main thing you probably want to probably uh, check out is the, the new feature for fast boot uh, criteria here are the USB support, PS2 devices support, and SATA devices support. So you can enable those things to let the BIOS uh, check for those devices when it starts up, such as your keyboard and mouse and SATA drives, and it will actually check through those, uh, those devices as it starts up you can see it uh, listing those devices as the BIOS loads and the other mode uh, that you can see on the screen is Windows 8 feature and when you enable that it also shows up a feature uh, at the bottom an option at the bottom called secure boot control and then you can choose different options there I won't cover that here since I don't use those options, but they're probably for uh, pertaining to pass keys and, and protecting your computer when you go to boot it up. So now with the Windows 8 feature and the fast boot enabled, but the MSI fast boot in particular disabled, we're going to restart the computer and I'm going to show you what happens when this fancy click BIOS uh, restarts. What you might hear is a few beep tones and uh, that's nothing to worry about because uh, it just gives you a message about your your graphics hardware. In my case it might be different in your case but apparently this is a, this is a new feature that uh, that goes hand in hand with Windows 8. But here all you have to do is press F1 to run setup and that's how you get back into your BIOS, which is what you want to do. 
so that you can uh, go in, go back in and disable the Windows 8 feature again. If you, that is, if you don't need it. And so now that we're back into the BIOS, uh, you can see that you actually, with uh, with the fast boot enabled, and at one point you restart, you might get this message. Uh, something looking like this that has yellow and white writing. Uh, this is one of the messages you can also recover from. You can reboot and uh, by pressing Control Alt Delete on the keyboard. So it's best to leave MSI Fast Boot disabled because when you go to enable that uh, and you reboot, you might find yourself locked out of your BIOS. But if you see this screen, uh, this is the one that actually showed up when I chose MSI Fast Boot, and then I had to reset my my BIOS, my CMOS. So just make sure the computer's unplugged. And then go to the rear panel and check your uh, clear CMOS button. It's a little uh, depressed button by the top of the I.O. panel. And you, what you do is just press that in for 10 seconds or so. And that will clear your settings and enable you to get back into your, uh, your BIOS. So go ahead and plug her back in. Fire it up and then you're back into the Click BIOS. So after I'm done setting my settings and making my tweaks and everything, I'm going to restart the computer. And then ready to load Windows. And so you're ready to load back to your start menu and your desktop. And the, the great thing about all this uh, BIOS updating is that uh, the, the new feature by MSI called Fast Boot, uh, not the MSI Fast Boot, just the regular Fast Boot, if you leave that enabled, it would actually cut down your uh, load times to your, to your start menu from being off, uh, from the computer being off to it coming to your start menu, it'll cut it down about five to 10 seconds. And it cuts down your restart uh, about five ten seconds also so there's, uh, there's at least one good thing that came out of that so I hope you've enjoyed this brief tutorial on how to update the BIOS in your MSI 990FXA-GD80 uh, motherboard to version 13.2 thanks for watching and I'll see you next time <laughs>